it kind of looks like I'm about to record a diss track and maybe it is because I'm about to talk about the top 10 worst reads that I had in 2019. These are books that had me questioning if I even wanted to continue being a reader. They put me in the worst reading slump known to humankind and they were just overall, they were really terrible and I had a really bad time reading them and i just want to make sure that none of you pick these books up because if your reading taste is like mine you're just going to have the worst time of your life and i really want to help you avoid that i'm probably going to be mentioning books that other people love other people adore and that's totally fine but in this channel we don't support these books because they are trash that's not to say that your opinion is not valid because i love you i love your individuality and we are you know, whatever, yay, yay, diversity and thought, woo, let's go. Before we begin, I did want to say a very big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The amount of support that they've given my channel means the absolute world to me. I feel like with the beginning of the year, this is just like the perfect time to get into Skillshare if you haven't already. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of different classes for creative and curious people that kind of want to revamp their life and learn a new skill or just delve into a new subject that they've been interested in but they've never really had the time to look into it or they just find it to be too expensive or it doesn't really fit into their schedule skillshare kind of solves all of those problems because it's super affordable it's less than ten dollars a month they have so many classes on so many different subjects like photography and graphic design and illustration i've watched so many different bullet journaling videos but i feel like this one in particular is really well thought out i've just found this class to be super easy and super fun to get into so i would definitely recommend it. If you guys are interested, you can use the link in my description, which is going to give you two months, two months for free of the premium membership, which basically gives you access to all of the classes in Skillshare, which is amazing. amazing. Without further ado, let's get into the top 10 worst reads of 2019. In the 10th spot, I have a graphic novel that I was actually very excited about because it looked really good like aesthetically speaking it was stunning and the colors were so captivating but the story itself is so flipping weird and usually i love weird but it's not the good weird it's like the really weird what did i just read kind of book and the fact that it was a graphic novel just made it that more disturbing and it was just i had no idea what was going on um and i haven't even mentioned the name of the graphic novel i'm talking about snot girl she's kind of living like this double life on social media she's like super popular and she's super classy and all of that stuff but in real life she has a bunch of allergies and she's always snotting everywhere she's really disgusting and all of her friends are fakes and she i don't like, I don't even know what goes on. It's just kind of her obsessing over other people on the internet and kind of faking it and just, I don't even like, I don't want to say anything because if you're still interested in picking this book up and wasting your time, I don't want to spoil anything, but just know that there is no actual plot line. Nothing actually happens and the characters, none of them are likable, but but not unlikable in the way that it's like interesting to analyze. They're just so absolutely boring that there's nothing to like about them. So yes, number nine is actually the first book that I got in Fairy Loot. And listen, I before I got Fairy Loot, I used to watch all of the unboxings and I was super excited and I was like, oh my god, these books look so cool. And then I never heard about these books ever again. Like these booktubers would unbox them and they would talk about the book and they'd be like oh my god i'm so excited to read this and then i never saw them reading it and it was like so was the book good <laughs> and i kind of wish that they would have warned me that the fairy loop books not that great circle of shadows um written by an author like no diss to the author i i i'm sure she has her audience i'm just not one of them it had so much promise like the cover yes 10 points the premise itself it sounded so interesting it was like this kind of school of assassins but they were meant to like protect the king it kind of reminded me of parabati parabatai i don't know what's the right 
way to say it, Parbati, Parbatai, in the Shadowhunter Chronicles, but basically it's like these two warriors and they're like connected and they like, they can fight better together. And so, you know, our two main characters are, they're that and they fall in love, but obviously that's not allowed. Ooh, surprise. It just held so much promise, but because of the writing and because of the, of how superficial the characters were written, there really isn't that much depth to the characters or the story itself and I feel like the whole system, like the system of the warriors being paired up together and that kind of bond that they have, it could have been something super interesting but they, the author didn't pull through and it was really disappointing. Coming up at number 8 is a book that I actually found through booktube and I was so excited to read it because everybody was talking about how good it was and how exciting it was and it was getting a movie adaptation and it was so amazing you know the representation and I was really excited to read it and then when I did and I found out how problematic it was oh my god it's dumpling written by an author I really like I'm not trying to hate on the authors I just I'm not good with names so I don't remember their names but dumpling is about this girl and she's overweight and she joins this um, beauty pageant and of course it's like battling those stereotypes of only skinny blonde you know you know like the beauty pageant kind of stereotypes and the thing is the premise itself is really promising it's like oh this is so refreshing this is amazing this is wonderful we need more characters like this but then the character the main girl she is a terrible human being and she talks about other girls as if they were literal vermin. I don't understand why there needs to be so much girl hate. I just feel like this book was really problematic because our main character was representing girls that don't usually get the spotlight and that don't usually make it to be the main girl character thing like you know you know what I'm saying? But I feel like the author went in the totally wrong way of portraying her story because our main character is filled with so much hatred towards other girls and she literally spends the whole book just insulting other girls for the way they look which is something that then she says is not right when they do it to her but then she can do it to others and it's just this double standard and the hypocrisy it just it hit me the wrong way man number seven is again but better written by christine ruscio it's not that it was a terrible book but but I was very disappointed by this book because again, Christine Ruscio is one of the first booktubers, if not the first booktuber that I ever found on YouTube. And I watched all of her writing vlogs of her talking about this book and just working so hard on this novel, her first novel to be published. As a viewer, I was so excited for her and I was so excited to get my hands on this copy and rave about this book and just like, you know, finally understand what she was so excited about. And then I actually read it and it was, it was just so, I just feel like it wasn't a good book because she depended too much on hip references, like cultural references. The amount of times that she mentioned the Beatles and Harry Potter and, you know, all of those cultural references just to, you know, sound in the know. I don't even know why she did that to be honest, but it, it did really take away from the quality of the writing and the story itself. The thing that shocked me the most is that Christine Ruscio, I love her reviews. Like every time that I want to reread a book in a series, I usually go to her channel and I watch her reviews of the previous books in the series because I feel like her reviews are so well thought out and I feel like the things that she says are so important and they're so critical into making a good book. So throughout all the years that I've been watching her, I've just, I've had this image or idea of her in my mind that she's a very critical reader. So I thought that that would kind of translate into her writing and it didn't. I had a different idea of the type of writing that she would create and the type of story that she would put out and then when I read it and I realized that it's just a generic white girl kind of rom-com I was very disappointed and the story itself is just really boring it's about this girl that goes to study abroad she's very shy she's very timid so she's not very outgoing and 
she kind of misses out on a lot of opportunities so for some reason she gets like a chance of a do-over she relives the whole experience and she does it again but better. The next book that I'm going to be talking about, I'm actually pretty sad that it made it to this list because it's it's by this author that I really love. I love her writing, I love her characters, but this book, it's so different from what I'm used to getting from her and every time I think about this book, I just get war flashbacks because it was just so terribly done and I wasn't expecting that from this author so it was very disappointing and that is The Archived written by Victoria Schwab. <laughs> I really can't believe that a Victoria Schwab book is mentioned in my top worst reads of 2019 yet here we are. The Archived is just a very convoluted, a very confusing, a very intricate type of story there is a lot of things to define and a lot of things to explain that I don't really want to get into because I've thought about this book way more than I should have. Like, I don't want to spend more time talking about this book, honestly. It's not that deep, sis. Like, it does not need to be this confusing. It does not need to have that much detail. And you don't need to have that much exposition in the first 30 pages of your book. Okay, this next book was actually one of the most surprising additions to this list because I've been reading this book consecutively for three years now I think every Christmas I would read this book and I would love it I would give it five out of five stars because I had so much fun reading it and then this year I don't know what changed apparently my third eye opened because I read this book and I realized how problematic it is how sexist it is how misogynistic it is and it was such a shame because I used to relate this book to Christmas time and just you know cozy feeling good christmas emotions you know holly jolly all those good feelings but this december i read it and it sh these past three christmases have all been a lie because how did i not realize that let it snow was one of the most sexist one of the most problematic christmas books in existence to date that I have read. The way that they talk about women, it's just why? What is the point? What is the need? It's not funny. Women are not a punchline. I just don't get it. Next up, we have the whole series of Red Queen, which is Red Queen, Glass Sword, something else and something else. I didn't read the last book because I was like, this is it. I'm done. I've suffered enough. I don't need more time with this series. Red Queen is also another book that was introduced to me by booktube, so thank you booktube. Um, I'm kidding. I love booktube. But sometimes some of the overhyped books that are found on booktube, they don't deserve the hype. Um. <laughs> Red Queen is a series about this world that's been divided by the type of blood that you have. So if you have red blood, then you don't have like any special powers. But then if you have silver blood, I think, you have like powers. Um, yeah. So our main girl, she she's in the red side of the community. But then of course, you know, it turns out that she has powers and everybody's like, but you have red blood, how can you have powers? So it's like this whole thing and then she kind of leads the revolution it's kind of like hunger games but with powers and blood <laughs> probably the only regret that i have of 2019 is buying the box set of red queen i ended up having to suffer through three books and a half of red queen because i was like i bought the box set so i might as well read the books and i kind of forced myself to read them and that really did put me in a reading slump like i regret forcing myself to read a book that I was 0% interested in. I just feel like it became too focused on the romance and that's not what I signed up for. This next book is probably one of the most beautiful books that came out in 2019 and unfortunately it's also in my top 10 worst reads of 2019 and that is The Gilded Wolves written by Roshani Shakshki. I remember that name because I have a hard time pronouncing it and I'm probably botching the heck out of the name But yes, the Gilded Wolves reminds me of when my mom gave my sister this random shirt and then she put it in a MacBook box So when she gave it to my sister my sister was like you got me a new MacBook And then she opened it and it was a shirt and she was like <laughs> Are we for real? God, it's so boring and God, it's so confusing, so unnecessarily confusing, and I feel like it just, 
it wanted to be something, but it wasn't. It was just very pretentious. It was, it was, the interactions were so uninspired. The characters were so cookie cutter. They were so, ah, I just thinking about it. I feel like I've blocked most of my experience reading The Gilded Wolves. When they were risking their lives, I was like, hopefully y'all die. And a lot of people on booktube were also hyping this book up so much. And they were also comparing it to Six of Crows which I feel like is an unfair comparison because at this point nothing really compares to Six of Crows so the fact that you compared the Gilded Wolves to like Six of Crows it kind of puts you in the mindset of oh this is going to be an amazing book and then when you actually read it it's like where? where is it amazing? <laughs> It's not. This next book, I know so many people love it and I really wanted to be a part of that gang. Like, we love this book gang, but unfortunately, I am not. I'm one of the very few people who had a very hard time getting through this book because it was very boring. Nothing happened, basically, and I feel like the characters are interchangeable because they are, they're literally just, they're basically all the same and it's renegades and arch enemies they have two main characters um one of them obviously is a super villain and the other one is a superhero and the super villain infiltrates the superhero's thing and she pretends to be a superhero and she's kind of like feeding information but then she's kind of turning into a good person you know like you know i feel like marissa meyer did not deliver. The author focused so much on the romance of it all that she kind of forgot about all the other characters and all the other side characters they're basically like not there because the author focuses on the romance between the two main characters and you know one is a super villain one is a superhero oh my god how are we ever going to get through this like it's very angsty and it's very teenagery and I guess I was just expecting more from it I thought it was going to be a bit more interesting than that but I guess the joke's on me because that's exactly what we get. The one that takes the cake. Number one, who do we think it is? Place your bets right now. I'll give you three seconds. It jokes, it's Aurora Rising. If you didn't see this coming, I feel like you haven't been in my channel for some time now. When I read this, probably like <laughs> I screamed into infinity for 70 years. I was so pissed at this book because it was so Terrible. The thing is, it was so disappointing because it came from two of the best science fiction authors. They've written Illuminae Files, which is one of my all-time favorite science fiction trilogies. So when I heard that they were coming out with a different science fiction story, I was like, oh my god, I am so excited to see this. I'm so excited to see the spin that they're going to give to this new story, new world, new characters. I got so mad because Aurora Rising is basically the Illuminae Files, but dumped down and of course very heavily focused on romance. Again, it all comes down to the characters. If you don't have a good character base, then your whole story is going to fall short because without good characters, you can't have a good story it's just not possible like you know the formula it won't work if the characters are not good and since Aurora Rising had just you know the the most basic set of characters of course it was not going to work so I'm getting heated um I don't want to keep giving Aurora Rising the power over me so I'm kind of just gonna stop talking about her I'm gonna stop giving her that power I left those feelings behind in 2019 I do not want to rehash my grudge so i'm going to leave it at that just know that aurora rising please don't read it if you want to read a good science fiction book then just pick up the illuminate files and if you've already read them and you want to read another science fiction book then read skyward by brendan sanderson because that is a man that knows how to write Ooh, i got heated but we are good we survived we're at the end of the video those were my top 10 worst reads of 2019 i hope you enjoyed my suffering and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye. You nice, keep going. <laughs>